nature is funny. I can tell you there are billions upon billions of stars, and you can just accept that and go on about your day. But if you see a wet paint sign on a park bench, you might just have to touch it to see if it's real. <laughs> sometimes things that are large and complex somehow seem distant and unimportant to us as individuals. So there is some danger that when I tell you that antibiotic resistance is one of the greatest threats to human health today, you will feel the same way. But I assure you, this park bench is wet. In fact, just one resistant bug, MRSA, kills more Americans each year than homicides, HIV, AIDS, Parkinson's, and emphysema combined. Last year, more Americans died from resistant infections than people worldwide died from Ebola. And unless things change, by 2050, resistant infections will kill more people than cancer. I think we all understand on some level that antibiotics are overused. That is, not every person that's prescribed an antibiotic actually needs it. And as a doctor, I understand there's some pretty good reasons for that. Maybe someone's too sick and we can't wait for the culture results. Maybe there's just not a good way to test for a particular infection. And physicians can be in some pretty tough situations. Imagine sitting across from a family that's just been up all night with a screaming toddler. How reassured are they going to be when you tell them you think this is just a viral ear infection and a call you in two days if things aren't better? That's two more days of sleepless nights, two more days of staying in a daycare. Now imagine sitting across from a mother in sub-Saharan Africa who's just walked 10 miles to bring her feverish two-year-old to your clinic. In some parts of Africa, one in every five children die of malaria. So even if you think this little one doesn't have malaria, how confident do you need to be before you don't treat for it anyway? You get it wrong, you may never see that child again. We have to be able to confidently say no, to prudently use antibiotics only when they're needed. It's clear that if we had fast, easy to use, reliable diagnostic devices that both healthcare providers and families trust, we could reduce unnecessary antibiotic use. So, what's the answer? Well, it turns out many microbes, the same bacteria, fungi, and parasites that cause infections, can make smells, just like flowers and fruits. And the flavor and fragrance industry already uses fancy high-tech machines called mass spectrometers to identify the compounds that confer the typical characteristics of our favorite foods, drinks, and cosmetics. That is, we understand on a chemical basis why an orange smells like an orange, and a lemon smells like a lemon. I believe we can use the same flavor-sniffing technology to figure out, for example, what pneumonia or strep throat smells like. My lab has recently discovered that even the malaria parasite makes volatile compounds that should find their way into the breath of children with malaria. Unfortunately, fancy mass spectrometers are too large and complicated for use in a doctor's office. But once you know what you're looking for, the devices get smaller and smaller. Electronic nose technology is already here and is already small enough to fit in your pocket. This tiny thing, and others like it, are already sold to consumers to help people know if they've had too much to drink. The technology is here. All we need to do is tune the sensors to detect infections rather than alcohol. My lab is beginning clinical trials in Africa to identify compounds that are only present in the breath of children with malaria. The same studies could be done in the US for patients with meningitis or influenza. The next step will be to develop and commercialize these sensors for use in the clinic. Someday soon, your doctor may have you pucker up and blow before pulling out the prescription pad. Not only is breath sensing likely faster and easier than current blood tests or cultures, better diagnostics will help us preserve our current antibiotics and ultimately save lives. I believe we are poised for a revolution in how we diagnose and treat infections, not just in the US, but worldwide. I dream of a day when we don't just think someone has an infection, we know. Thank you. <laughs>